What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, so this is another iMovie tutorial. In this video, what I'm gonna show you guys is how to edit cinematic footage from the iPhone 13s. Now, it's not as easy as it seems, and a lot of people, once they transfer it over, they can't seem to get those cinematic settings. Now, what are those cinematic settings? What that means is that you can actually control the f-stops and the focus points in post, which is something a regular camera can't do. It's not perfect, it's a fairly new technology that they're using, this is the first years they put cinematic in these phones, but it's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty good. Now keep in mind, cinematic mode is only at 1080p, 30 FPS. So with that being said, let's get this video started. Now, it all has to do with how you airdrop your file into your computer. So once it does that, it's going to send you this file in the MOV form. So once you click and you drag it to the timeline, it's going to play like normal, which is the way it was intended, which is the way it was recorded. But here's the thing though, with cinematic mode, you're supposed to have the option to fix the F stops and fix how much background blur. Now you see there's the guy that's going to jump into the screen right now, walk through the screen. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty decent, right? What if I wanted to have the focus on the cars behind him? or not on him and blur him out. I don't have that option here in the iMovie screen. That all comes back to how exactly you airdrop. So that's where a lot of people get stuck because when they try to transfer it over to the computer, they see they don't have the options to play with the f-stop or the focus points of the cinematic footage. Now, this is what you're doing wrong, guys. So let's jump back into the phone, right? So when you click upload, you're gonna do is, you're gonna click the options under it says video selected. You see you have options here. Click those options and you're gonna click all photos data. What that does is that allows all the data captured, all the cinematic data captured from the camera to be able to get transferred into the computer. So let's just send that over to the computer. Airdrop that. Here's the thing though, when you airdrop a real cinematic, the actual footage with all this data, you're gonna get it in the form of a folder. So you're gonna have, you see this folder? I have a few files here. Here's what I noticed, you have two different files. 4002.mov, or one with an E in front of it, E4002.mov. Now, there is a difference, watch guys. So, let's work with the four, let's work with the E, E4002. Now, once we bring that into our timeline, let's exit out of this for a second, bring our timeline up, let's expand this. You're gonna see that it's gonna play pretty much the same, let's just, to where I can actually showcase that, all right. So once the guy walks into the frame, you're gonna see it, it's it's doing the same thing it was doing as if we just uploaded the other airdrop, right? There's no other options, there's no anything that says, hey, where's the, where's the cinematic settings, right? And that's where a lot of people get confused. Now the one that you want is the MOV, the one that doesn't have, which is this original file right here. Watch what happens when I transfer this original file into the timeline. Remember, when you airdrop cinematic with all this data, you're gonna have four files, two of them video, and the, for the one that has the cinematic settings is gonna be this one, the MOV, not the one with the E. So once we put this into the timeline, check out what happened, guys. Now you see this little camera here, this little camera setting here, you have depth of field. We can control the depth of field now, make it as sharp as we want as anything. Whereas we click this one, this is the original file, we don't have it. You have a little camera. Once you have the little camera, that, that you know we have the cinematic footage. Now, let's just, for instance, let's say, all right, let's work on this guy right here. We're gonna clip it, we're gonna clip it. We're gonna get rid of this clip because we already know that's not the one we need. So once that file is clipped, we already know what we're gonna do. We're gonna work with this guy. He's gonna be our, our host with the most. So, as you can see, when you choose no depth of field, you're gonna have this. Sorry, it's daytime, a lot going on out there. All right, so when you choose depth of field, if it's not chosen, everything's in focus, everything looks good as it should. Now, when we click depth of field, you see what just happened? He went blurry because the car is in focus now. Now we click him, this is the good thing about cinematic since it's all post. If I'm recording and it's not focused the way I want to, I can fix that now after the whole thing is recorded. So let's jump back in this, say I wanted him in focus. So all I have to do is click him. Boom, he's in focus, just like that. Now, if I wanted the car in focus again, boom, the car's in focus, him, boom. 
Now, if I wanted everything, or if I wanted to control the f-stop in this, you just click the slider here and slide in. The wider you open it, the more in focus everything's gonna be. Now, if you wanted a, a actual image, just like that, boom, he'll be in focus. Now, if we go back, send it off to him, only he's gonna be in focus. Let's play the clip showing him in focus with the depth of field at two. You see everything around him, everything to the side of him. All right, guys, so those are my quick tips for editing cinematic footage on iMovie. Now, it would probably wasn't the best example, the best explanation, but the main thing you wanna do here is remember, when airdropping, make sure you click the options button and you click all camera, all photo data. All photo data, that's the only way you're gonna have the controls over in iMovie. Now, the same controls you have in iMovie are gonna be the same controls you're gonna have in FCP, Final Cut Pro. It does have the option to edit cinematic mode. But iMovie is more beginner stage. And like I said in my previous video, I started with iMovie. iMovie is what I've been rocking. I do have FPX, but I am currently learning. Let me tell you, it's a curveball, so it's taking me quite some time. But if I can help anyone with iMovie, with the iMovie experience, I will gladly do so. So without further ado, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.